Hello everyone. Let's start studying isomerism. Isomerism, you must be having an idea of as to what this isomerism is. Isomerism is a property in which compounds having same molecular formula exhibit different properties. Now that property can be a physical property, that property can be a chemical property. But the basic criteria for two compounds to exhibit isomerism is that they should have, they must have same molecular formula. Now this isomerism is broadly classified into two categories. One of them is structural isomerism and other one is stereoisomerism. The basic difference between them is in structural isomerism the connectivity of atoms changes. For example, suppose I have a straight chain of four carbon, I have butane. This is generally termed as n-butane, meaning normal butane. Now this butane can have an isomer. The isomer could be this. This is 2-methyl propane. If you see this methyl from the, this carbon has been transferred to this carbon. The molecular formula of these two are same. But of course the other properties like physical, of, like uh, react, reactive reaction towards halogenation, physical properties like boiling point, melting point, all will be different because the structure is different, surface area is different. This has a 3 degree carbon. This does not have a 3 degree carbon. So all the properties would be different. Nevertheless, they are isomers and the point is the connectivity has been changed. This carbon previously used to be attached to this carbon which was 2 degree carbon. Now this carbon, this methyl group is attached to this carbon which is 3 degree carbon. So the connectivity of carbon has been changed. Which atom is attached with which atom that changes. If that changes, that will lie in the category of the structural isomerism. If that does not change, the connectivity remains same, then that will lie in the category of stereoisomerism. For example, suppose this is a, a compound, this is one form of 2-butene. I have drawn 2 because this carbon is making a pi bond, this is sp2 hybridized and the bond angle will be 120 degree. So considering that, I have drawn one structure of 2-butene. Generally, if you are not concerned with isomerism, you will draw 2-butene like this. But if you have to show bond, actually this is shown to be 180 degree. But for convenience, we draw it like this. But actually, it doesn't exist like this. The angle between these two bonds will be 120 degree because the hybridization is sp2. So to draw it properly, considering the bond angle, this can be drawn like this. So this is one form of 2-butene. Fine. Now, I could have drawn alternatively like this. If you look at the angle, all the bond angles are still 120 degree. So the, the consideration that we took uh, was uh, sp2 hybridization of carbon and bond angle to be 120 degree. That is still satisfied with this structure as well. So this methyl can be on the same side of the plane, molecular plane, or the plane of the pi bond, or it could be on different side of the molecular plane or the plane of the pi bond. Now both are possible, both are legitimate structures, both are viable, but in this you have to observe that the connectivity of atoms haven't been changed. That this methyl was attached with this carbon as it is still attached with this carbon. The hydrogen which is attached with the carbon that is still attached with the same carbon. So connectivity of the atom, which atom is attached with which atom that has not been changed. Only the orientation in space has been changed. If that is the case, then the isomerism will lie in the category of a stereoisomerism.
If that is not the chain case, if the connectivity changes, that will lie in the category of a structural isomerism. So that's the basic difference. Now this structural isomerism will be easy to analyze and to understand. So it will be very rudimentary. Now the major chunk of the portion of isomerism is of the stereoisomerism and there will be various kinds of stereoisomerism. Isomerism as such is important because this could be a question appearing in your question paper in a number of one or two. But they can be clubbed with the reaction mechanisms that you will study subsequently. And using isomerism, they could ask questions in any of the reaction because certain reaction will be stereo specific. They will be give, they will give one kind of stereo isomers. They will, the, 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 the major product will be one kind and that will have priority over the other. So, uh, this is important for to analyze which will be the major product in the reaction mechanism that we are going to study henceforth. So in that sense, it becomes very important, although a direct question from this stereoisomerism can be less in number. But it's very important to understand in order to grasp the stereo specificity of the reaction that we are going to study henceforth. So let's quickly first of all complete the structural isomerism part and perhaps you must be knowing this, you must have studied some of it in class 10. And let's quickly finish this off and then we'll deal with stereoisomerism. Now there could be various kinds of structural isomerism. The first in the classification would be chain isomerism. As the name suggests, the main chain, if you have studied nomenclature, you know what the main chain is. The main chain or this carbon skeleton of the molecule will be different. For example, if I have pentane, if I have normal pentane, all the five carbon atoms will be in a straight chain. I mean, in a straight chain meaning they are connected in a line because they, this is not 180 degree, we understand. This carbon is sp3 hybridized, in reality it will be 109 degree, although we draw it in like a straight chain, but we need to have the understanding they are not straight actually. So this is normal pentane. Now, this normal pentane could have an alternative structure. Not in order to decide and to count the number of isomerism that will be a chain isomerism exhibited by this. What you do is you start with methyl, take away this methyl out and then try and adjust this methyl to another position that will give a different structure. So let's start with four carbon in the chain and take a methyl out. Now, if you put this methyl to the first carbon, it will become this structure. So putting the carbon or the methyl group to the first carbon is not a good idea. So if you put methyl to the second carbon, you'll get a different structure. Because the main chain will have three carbons. The skeleton of the carbon has been changed. And this has become, I'm not drawing the hydrogens. Just for uh, brevity. So this is 2-methylbutane. This is pentane. So this is a different structure. But the molecular form formula is same. So they are isomers. Similarly, you can think of more isomers. For example, you can take this methyl and hover it over to different position. If you bring it to this carbon, actually this will again be same as what we have drawn here. The IUPAC name of this is again 2-methylbutane because this time the numbering will be from left hand side. Actually, if you flip this, you will get this structure. So either even though they may look different, but if you write the IUPAC no name of the compounds, they will come out to be the same. And from the IUPAC name, you'll come to know that actually they are the same. So, taking methyl as a substituent, substituent, you are done. You are not getting more structures. So, take ethyl as a substituent. Try and take ethyl as a substituent. To take, try and take ethyl as a substituent, we have to take ethyl out. We are left with three carbon in the main chain. If you put on the first carbon, bad idea, you're going to get this structure. If you're going to put it on the second carbon, it may look that you have got a new structure. But if you look carefully, the main chain would be this. And the carbon is on second carbon, which is identical to this structure. So you haven't got a new structure. Be careful. Because this is same as this. And so you're not getting a new structure using ethyl as a substituent. So now you have to try take 2-methyl as a substituent. 
If you take two different methyls as substituent, then three carbon will be left out. Putting it on the first carbon is a bad idea because that will give you four carbon in the main chain, which you have already got. So put it on the second carbon. And again, the other methyl also have to be put on the second carbon. Now, this is a new structure because in the main chain, you're getting three carbon, which is not common to any of the previous structures. So uh, this is a new structure. Similarly, hence, for the, th that's how you have to look for uh, number of possible isomers. There's no shortcut. There's no formula. Analytically, you have to think about it.